السلام علیکم آپ سب کو آپ سب کو یو ایس کونسلٹ کراچی کی جانب سے کافی بد خوش میں خوش آمدید ویلکم ٹو آل آر ویورس فرام دا یو ایس کونسلٹ جنرل ان کراچی پاکستان میرا نام کرش داس ہے اور میں یہاں یو ایس کونسل جنرل کراچی کا ترجمن ہوں ٹوڈے وی ہیو دی آنر آف چیٹنگ ود آر ایکٹنگ کونسل جنرل ہیئر ان کراچی ڈیرین آرکی ڈیرین ارائیو ان کراچی ان ٹوینٹی ایٹین اکٹوبر آفٹر سروگ اے ایئر ان لاہور ایز دا مینجمنٹ آفیسر ایٹ آر یو ایس کونسل جنرل ان لاہور ڈیرین ہیز بین ود دا یو ایس اسٹیٹ ڈپارٹمنٹ فار آلموسٹ ٹوینٹی ایئرز ناؤ He has served in, in a number of interesting places, but this is his first stint, or rather first time he's been in Pakistan and in South Asia. Uh, Darren was born in California and raised in Nevada, and uh, he and his wife uh, live in Prague in the Czech Republic, where he will retire after his posting in Karachi. Uh, Darren, welcome to uh, our show. Ham aapka khushamdeed kehte hain, which means welcome to Karachi, Pakistan. Great. It's great to be here. I'm uh, thrilled to finally be on Coffee with Krish. And uh, from all of us in uh, Karachi, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, working with you and for you. And uh, we have, uh, you know, we truly admire your leadership. And again, we are glad and delighted that you're here. It's a, it's a great team. It's been a pleasure uh, for me to be here. And uh, I'm not ready to leave yet. I still have a few months of uh, excitement here in Karachi. So that's, that's, that's good to know. Darren, let me go directly into my questioning. You have been in Karachi for almost a year now. Yeah. And uh, prior to that, for a year, you were in Lahore. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us about your experiences living and working in Pakistan. I, I think it's been fantastic, uh, in a word. Uh, when I think back to all of the many things that I've experienced from the time I arrived in Lahore um, to just these last six weeks as the acting consul general uh, here in Karachi, uh, they've just been the most outstanding experiences, personal and professional, uh, that I've had throughout my entire career, anywhere else I've served. Pakistan is uh, just a fantastic place. The people are wonderful. And I can't think of any place else that I've been, or can I imagine any place else that I haven't been, uh, that I'd like to uh, end my, my career, uh, spend my, my last time uh, in the Foreign Service. And, and really well said. And also, you know, you and I have, have had this sort of, these conversations a number of times, and both of us agree that uh, Pakistanis are one of the most hospitable and welcoming people on the face of this planet. Yeah, that, that's absolutely uh, correct. And I think you have to be here to really uh, experience it. And I'm, I'm glad exp- that, I, exactly, yeah, that I have. Exactly. People have really opened up uh, their, their homes and their hearts to me. Uh, they've shared uh, their, their thoughts uh, and views uh, about the world. Uh, and I really feel like the relationships that I've developed here uh, are some of the deepest and, and truly uh, friendship-based uh, relationships and, and not just... Uh, in the nature of, you know, I know people because yeah. that's my job. Yeah. And also, I mean, I can, I can confidently say, as, 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 you, as will you, that the, the friends that we made here in Karachi and across Pakistan uh, are truly like, going to be lifelong friends. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it's my intent to stay in touch uh, with a number of people here. And I hope, uh, even after I retire, Uh, that my wife and I will both have the opportunity to come back As uh, and I can show her around uh, okay. a bit a bit more uh, and also explore some of the places that I just didn't have an opportunity to see. There's yeah. so much uh, to see here in Pakistan that I, I think, um, you know, I'd have to I'd have to spend a lifetime, another yeah. career uh, just exploring uh, all it's, the many it's places. It's truly a hidden gem. And uh, also, I mean, of course, after retirement, you'll have ample time to sort of explore this beautiful country. Which leads me to my next question, Darian. What separates Karachi from Lahore? And what are some of your uh, favorite places in uh, Karachi and Lahore? I mean, both are beautiful cities. Right. I mean, and they have their own sort of beauty, beauties or other things that you can see uh, in their own right. Yeah, no, that, so, that's true. Yeah. Uh, and I know uh, often uh, my friends here in, uh, in Karachi are, are kind of looking for me to say, uh, you know, which one's better. Uh, or is this better <laughs> about Karachi than Lahore? That's always a difficult question. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to go there. I know my right. friends in Lahore will be w- watching this as well. Right. Uh, but the truth is that for me, it, it's, it's kind of like bookends. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm really glad that I've had the opportunity 
um, to experience uh, both cities. Okay. Um, I'd say that in some way, perhaps because Lahore was my first experience in Pakistan, uh, and because of the deep um, historical, cultural, and uh, architectural context of, of Lahore, that in a way, perhaps I could say that my heart and my spirit uh, belong to Lahore. Karachi uh, thrills my senses and keeps my mind racing all the time. Uh, just the pace of life here. Uh, it's a, vi a vibrant, a vibrant city. city yeah. uh, and so really, um, I've had this sort of whole person experience uh, yeah. by having the opportunity to serve in both places. I, I, I wouldn't be able to say uh, that one is, is better than the other. I just think uh, that they have offered me, uh, as I say, a complete experience. And they're unique in their own, you know, own ways. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Darren, you have traveled to various parts of Sindh uh, as well, uh, including the Markley uh, necropolis and the Varundev temple. Uh, which were preserved through the uh, Ambassadors Fund, which right. was through the U.S. Department of State for cultural preservation. How was that experience? Uh, fascinating, uh, really. Um, you know, you you asked me a little bit earlier about some of the places that that uh, really stand out in, in my mind, uh, Lahore and Karachi. And I guess I'll I'll kind of talk about Makli as part of my Karachi mm -hmm. experience mm -hmm. and the Varun Dev uh, Mandir as well. Uh, the, the impression uh, that Mockley made upon me uh, is just an everlasting one. It's an incredible place, uh, and the, the architecture um, is just, it's amazing. I, I suppose maybe people who've spent a little more time in South Asia might say, okay, uh, we've, we've seen this before, but for a first-time visitor, uh, I just came away uh, with, my, with my eyes popping. Um, the great thing about uh, the project that we uh, funded through the Ambassadors uh, Fund uh, for, cultural uh, for cultural preservation right, mm -hmm. um, is, is that you can see that it's a sustainable uh, project. When we were out there, it's not simply that they restored uh, this wonderful piece of architectural heritage, but it's become uh, a, a viable part of the community where uh, young people are going uh, to learn about historical preservation. Obviously, it's a, it's a part of the religious life of the community as well. Uh, and it really pleased me to see uh, that the project that we did out there uh, is something uh, that's self-sustaining and, uh, and lasting. The sustainability part is important because it's, 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 a, it's something for the future ge generations, as you said, to learn and understand uh, history. Uh, absolutely, and actually uh, kind of switching gears a little bit and going back to uh, Lahore, I had the, the wonderful opportunity there as well to see another project, uh, the Wazir Khan Mosque that was also absolutely uh, partially restored uh, under the Ambassadors Fund for Cultural Preservation. And that's another place that uh, it's just impossible to describe. You have to uh, be there to understand um, not only uh, how the place uh, looks and, and how spectacular it is, um, but to really get uh, a sense of the, the spirituality of it. Um, for me, uh, whether it was Wazir Khan or Badshahi Mosque, I also had the chance to visit. Uh, these were places where more than any place else I've been in my life, I really had a feeling of a kind of a, of a peacefulness uh, and something that just really transcends the everyday experience. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you've told us about all of these great experiences. Are there any of the highlights of your stay here in Karachi that you would like to share with our uh, viewers? Well, uh, I am something of a foodie. Uh, so it's true uh, that perhaps... Not we all, yeah, especially no, it, when it comes to Pakistani food. No, exactly. So it's, 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 so, it's so, you know, it's just amazing. It's fantastic. Yeah. And I have to say that I've only recently, uh, I know it sounds crazy, but only recently have I really had an opportunity to sample uh, street food in a meaningful way, uh, thanks to, uh, again, some of the people that I've gotten to know. Um, I wish I had started with that a little bit uh, earlier. Um, but in the meantime, uh, the fantastic restaurants that, that are here uh, that uh, are doing things that I think 
rival the finest restaurants, again, anywhere oh, else I've been in the world. Absolutely, and the food is amazing, just yeah. fantastic. But, you know, the, the food, I, I wouldn't want it all to be about, okay, uh, food. Um, I Again, I have to say that for me, uh, being in this part of the world for the first time, uh, really having the opportunity to experience um, the historical, cultural context uh, of this part of the world, um, through its architecture, through its art, um, through its fashion, uh, which is another thing that uh, is near and dear to my heart. Um, I feel that the the colors and the textures and the vibrancy of the uh, of the clothes and the architecture and the food and the street scenes, it all kind of comes together in one uh, attractive force that that just uh, draws. Uh, whatever is inside of you in the way of artistic expression. Absolutely, and there are some extremely talented people here in Karachi. Yeah, very much so. I mean, in, in all, all sectors. Absolutely. Uh, I would say that uh, as I've gotten to know people in the community here, um, it really has given me a, a sense of not just how uh, Karachi is that sort of bustling, uh, vibrant city that we talk about, but uh, there are things happening here uh, in the business community, in science and technology, education, uh, young people, uh, forces that are uh, necessary to keep that vibrancy going into the future. They may not be sort of as flashy as what you, uh, what you think about when you're out and about in town, um, but it's all part and parcel of what makes us a great city. You seem to be a fan of the great poet, Alama Iqbal. I think many of us are. Uh, and of, you often quote him in your remarks. What what fascinates you about uh, his poetry? Well, I'm going to have to disappoint you a little bit. I didn't know as much about Iqbal mm -hmm. as you might imagine uh, as I went ahead and incorporated some of his quotes into some of my, my remarks. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I think most recently uh, when we were doing our program for the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, mm -hmm. Uh, I was just Googling a little bit and, and kind of hoping that there might be some connection. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know Iqbal is, uh, is, very, is very popular, as is Ghalib, someone else uh, who I... But I thought maybe the love sonnets of Ghalib might not be as, uh, as useful. And funnily enough, I bumped into a great essay that uh, someone wrote uh, comparing uh, Iqbal's uh, poetry uh, to the, uh, the, the plot of a science fiction movie okay. and how he was talking about uh, <laughs> time and space and things like that. So I think he just really uh, caught my attention. And uh, from that point on, I, I've used him as sort of my, uh, my go-to source for, uh, for quotes. And what a great inspiration and source. Absolutely. Truly. Yeah. Uh, now, going back to, it's all about food, isn't it? Right. <laughs> sure. Going back to food, you know, as, you, as, as we, we, we both, both of us agree that Pakistani food is absolutely delicious. Yeah. What, what has been, what are your favorite foods, uh, if, 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 if I may ask? Well, so, I guess when it comes to uh, breakfast food, I've really become a, a Hawa Puri fan. Uh, Alba puri. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's kind of sweet, isn't it? Yeah, but it's sweet and savory at the same that's time. Right, that's and right. And again, I think that's just a classic uh, Pakistani thing. Nothing is one-dimensional. Yes, it's, it's so always dark. layered and lots of texture right. and interesting things going on. And I like the way you sort of assemble it for yourself. There's so much it's, diversity uh, it's, in the it's, food. It's yeah, art yeah. on a plate. Yeah. Um, chana chat, uh, chana masala, um, pani puri. I've just really kind of lately gotten into the street right, food. Right. Uh, of course, biryani. Right. Uh, everyone has to do That's that. That's of course, it's, it's the best. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, I think I'd have to say that right now I'm not prepared to say what my favorite is because I know that my exploration is really, uh, sadly, only just beginning. Right. So uh, maybe in a follow-up, I'll I'll have a winner for you. And don't forget the halim, by the way. Ah, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, Darian, your attire prominently figures traditional Pakistani dresses. And we all admire the attire, the Pakistani, you know, dresses. What do you like the most about Pakistani clothing? Well, I think first and foremost, it's practical. Okay. Uh, you know, when the weather is hot uh, and humid, um, you know, loose-fitting clothing, it, it, just makes, uh, it just makes good sense. Absolutely. Once again, uh, Pakistanis uh, uh, 
do things uh, for, for practical reasons, just like anyone else, as much as for uh, artistic expression through fashion. Yeah. But in the broader sense, um, you know, when I arrived in Lahore, um, I didn't, uh, I didn't own uh, any clothing uh, beyond my sort of Western dress, but little by little, I started to acquire a little bit of something here and something there. I and think it's a quiet taste, I mean, you, and you begin to appreciate yeah, what, I, what it's about. For me, really, uh, the, the colors, the fabrics, I, I'm going to sound again like I'm talking about the food, but the, the textures, the layering, the whole effect, um, you know, you have an opportunity just in your everyday dress um, to uh, express yourself artistically. And I love the fact that here um, that doesn't mean that you're uh, being uh, sort of unusual, uh, but just doing what everybody else does. And I, I like that the way um, that form of art is, uh, is incorporated in, in everyday life. Um, you know, going, going beyond that into some of the other things I, I wear, uh, you know, um, that might be more my own personal expression. Yeah. Uh, but I also like the fact that, uh, as I say, Pakistan is a place uh, where there's a lot of freedom for diversity of expression. Absolutely. Darian, uh, Pakistan has this amalgamation of cultures, as mm. we both, both have sort of discussed about diversity, uh, heritage and languages. I mean, there's right. so much diversity and variety and, I mean, in everything, right? How would you, what is your personal sort of description of, of this uh, particular amalgamation? Yeah, I, I think I really, this kind of uh, hit me um, very strongly when I was at the uh, the National Museum here in Karachi mm -hmm. and realized uh, that the Indus River Valley uh, civilizations and that amalgamation of, uh, of, uh, of, of societies and cultures and, and faiths, um, it's kind of the original melting pot, uh, if you think about it, long before uh, there was a, a, a melting pot it's, called the United it's, States. It's such an ancient and rich and diverse culture. Yeah, absolutely. History is just amazing over here. Right, and for me, somebody who, again, I'm, you know, that consumer of uh, of art and, and architecture, all the vestiges of those societies um, are here, and and some of them continue to be, you know, maintained and part of contemporary life as well. And flourish. And flourish, um, and so uh, you know, you you've got this uh, sort of uh, smorgasbord. I'm back to food again, right? But. Uh, yeah, it's just a, 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 a place where um, you can sample so many uh, different things and you really get a sense of how it makes sense yeah. uh, for this, this sort of cultural uh, integration and diversity in a society and how, how it works and how it should work. Uh, and finally, I had one last question. I know we're running out of time, but sure. have you picked up a few words in Urdu? <laughs> yeah, Th this so is, that's not a trick no, question. No, 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 no. Th this is this is maybe the saddest uh, thing uh, uh, about my experience here. I um, have been fairly successful in language learning and in some of the other places right. I've I've been. You speak fluent uh, Czech. I, I do. And apart from a few other languages. Well, and I should, but uh, uh, you know, because I, I spent a lot of time there, and my my wife is from the Czech Republic. Yeah. Uh, I had every intention, every good intention of learning Urdu. I got started and I fell flat on my face. Um, and then I was here, um, you know, English generally works well. Um, yeah, a, and I a just lot never, of people speak English here. Uh, yeah. I just never got going with it. So I, uh, I apologize to everyone out there that uh, I haven't done better with that. I'd love nothing more uh, than to be able to say something clever, perhaps from Iqbal, uh, but unfortunately, yeah, I don't I'm have sure it. I'm sure you'll find ample time in your retirement. Absolutely. And, and Urdu, you know, I, I took two years of Urdu. I try to practice Urdu and uh, speak it. Uh, but it is one of the most beautiful languages. That, that's always the case that if you really want to understand the culture of where you are, you, you have to speak the language. I, I know even when I'm reading these uh, translations of these love sonnets of Ghalib and I read this English, you know, you, you can kind of sense that I bet that's not quite <laughs> how he said it. But uh, yeah, I'll, uh, perhaps I'll get around to that. Excellent. Darian, it has been an absolute pleasure to uh, have you here uh, in our studio and to chat with you about and learn about uh, your passion for this beautiful country called Pakistan.
Thanks very much. Uh, I'm sure our uh, viewers also enjoyed this insightful conversation as much as I did. We wish you all the best for uh, your future and your uh, post-retirement life. Uh, a big thanks to all of our viewers for joining us during this chat. Have a good day. Shukriya or Allah Hafiz. One more thing, Krish, before we close. Just occurred to me. I do know a little bit of Urdu. Pakistan, Zindabad. Yes, Pakistan, Zindabad.